Greetings, dear viewer. I'm Petu, and this is How to Actually Climb the Diamond with Shen. The idea is simple. I will play a game in each tier, from silver to diamond, and show you exactly what you need to do in order to win games in each tier. I will fit as much game knowledge as is humanly possible into my commentary, and I guarantee that you will learn something new while watching this video. I'm convinced that anyone can reach diamond by mimicking my Shen playstyle, but it requires you to commit time and effort. That starts by watching this video attentively and taking notes of what I teach. I have divided the video into five chapters, corresponding to the games in each tier, that is, silver, gold, platinum, emerald and diamond. The first game here in silver, we are starting out versus a vain top lane. Now this might be the bane of your existence if you are a silver top laner, or any top laner in general, because Vayne as a champion can be very frustrating to deal with. If you take a look at my runes here guys, I'm running Grasp of the Undying, Shield Bash, Second Wind, Overgrowth, and then Domination 3 Secondary with Cheap Shot and Ingenious Hunter. Ingenious Hunter might be the only one that stands out for you guys, and I will get into that uh, later because it synergizes with the build that I plan to do. But take a look at the most important uh, kind of two uh, essence, essential parts of uh, gameplay versus range champions. Uh, these are Doran Shield and Second Wind. If you have Doran Shield and Second Wind, uh, you can beat any range top laner. Oy, I made a little mistake there by delaying my E. Now we're gonna stay in the bush in order to stay out of vision. Looks like the Vayne is just coming towards us. One more, one more auto attack uh, and Ignite kills here. We got her flash as well. Like, guys, do, did I do anything? Like, did I do anything weird? No, I'm literally just walking up towards the opponent. If you are silver, please, like take notes. Like you can literally just walk up. You know you're stronger. You have stronger runes. You have Doran shield. Like just walk up. Don't be scared about ranged top laners. These guys, they won't know how to play them effectively anyways. As I say that, I miss my cannon minion there and another minion. But you know, we can emulate the silver uh, CS here. So if you guys are silver, you don't need to have perfect CS. It's, it's, it's really good if you improve your CS, but you don't need to have perfect CS in order to get out of this elo. Now, take a look at this, guys. Am I, am I like, am I doing anything weird? No, literally, if you are silver, like, you can get out of your elo pretty easily. Just follow these steps, alright? The, the most important part is not dying at all. Now, at this point, we want to take a recall, right? We see Brand over here, so we're just gonna take a recall. We're just gonna take a recall. And we're gonna relax a little bit. Okay, hopefully he doesn't stop our recall. No. What is our first item going to be this game? Plated Steel Caps is very good into Vayne. However, since they have an AP jungler, I will not buy that. Most of you thinking you want to rush the Titanic Hydra would go Tiamat. However, it is better to go Tunneler and purchase a control ward. Why do we go Tunneler instead of Titanic Hydra? We take Tunneler because it gives us HP. Titanic, uh, sorry, Tiamat, I meant. Tiamat gives us 20 AD, it gives us wave clear, it gives us the ability to do a little bit of more burst. But if we think about what we need at this point in the game, we don't ne yet need to shove out waves. All we need is a little bit of survivability, a little bit of combat stats. And the control ward, this is gonna be very important, guys. If you're silver, you need to buy one control ward for like 20 minutes. I will show you where to place it. But you only need one, because they will not find it. It will be hidden, and it will give you value for the entire game. And that's only 75 gold that you have to invest. If that saves you from one gank, it's worth. If that saves your teammate from one gank, it's worth. If that gives you a kill, it's worth. If that lets you know that the enemy jungler is not topside, that's already worth. Because then you can play more aggressively. When they are harassing you under tower like this, just use your W to negate their poke. Stand back and then only take auto attacks as needed. And by taking auto attacks I mean like, you know, taking an auto attack to the face. So whenever you're fighting with range minions, don't just let the ranged champions, don't just let them attack you. And now we know, you know, we are stronger, right? So what we can do is we can take the short path here. All I'm doing is I'm cutting Vayne's escape path off. Now she has used Condemn. And she will take a lot of damage. We don't need to kill her. We don't need to kill her. We just cut off her, cut off her escape path. Look, Ignite cooldown. We want to play when we are strong, okay? So we're gonna wait for Ignite cooldown. And then we're gonna slow her. And we're gonna flash on top of her. And, and this is nothing weird. Look, <laughs> I can still kill her with Ignite. Like, it's 
this doesn't require you to have mechanics. It requires you to have an understanding of when a champion is strong and when a champion is not strong. This is the most important part about top lane. Now we, we want to put an ultimate down bot lane because our teammates are dying over there from a Twisted Fate ultimate. I'm gonna try to kill the Ezreal, but he actually lives with 5 HP, which is quite crucial. Another teammates die here. Now, now we are in a bit of a pickle here, guys. We are in a bit of a pickle. They are going for my cold mob, so I'm gonna turn it a little bit around. We killed the Twisted Fate, and we killed the Neko. There's still a brand that's chasing me. We're gonna have to dodge, dodge his Q. Dodge his Q, guys, okay? Do a little bit of a maneuver and then maybe go back in. Don't go back in, okay? Leave it, leave it. We're fine. We don't need to do anything else. We can recall now, okay? We have four kills. Don't, don't be too, you know, greedy. When you have gotten some a successful place, just, just go out. Now, here, what would you purchase, okay? Just tell me, what's the right answer? What would you purchase, right? Diamat, correct, but what then? What then? That's right, refillable potion. Whenever, let's say you are before 10 minutes and you go on a back where you have an extra 200 gold, 150 gold to 200 gold, just purchase a refillable potion. It gives you good value, you can still sell it for 60, so essentially you're spending 90 gold on this uh, permanently. And if that 90 gold again gives you a little bit of an advantage, if it gives you uh, four, uh, four more minions because you can stay in lane a little bit longer, it's already worth. Maybe even three minions if, if we count in the experience, because experience is actually oftentimes more important than, uh, than gold. And again, look guys. We don't need to do anything special. And now, in a situation like this, you know what is the top laner's key ability to do? Not auto attack the wave, okay? Don't, like, you could, you have Tiamat, and you could be going, oh, oh, I want to clear the wave, I want to clear the wave. No, don't do that. Let the wave shove into you. Because what we can do, is we can freeze the wave. I know, sounds daunting, but I think most of you know how this works, right? I'm not trying to sound condescending here, by the way, but the thing is that if you are still in silver, like, you need to understand that maybe these kind of fundamental things, like uh, Alois always preaches about, are the things that are holding you back. Okay? All we want to do right here is keep enemy minions alive, so that they kill our minions all the time. And now we can permanently keep the wave here. We don't need to go on a kill for the vein, we don't need to do anything rush. We just need to give a little bit of minions here, and just relax. Okay? Now we're just gonna start slow pushing. Okay, slowly, slowly. We're gonna kill a little bit of minions. We're gonna start low, slow pushing. Why do we start slow pushing? Because in 30 seconds we will have our ultimate, okay? So in 30 seconds we want to have the wave crashed in so that we don't lose a lot of minions and experience, okay, when we ult. We're gonna go for a town here and look at me guys, okay? I'm not doing anything special. I'm just walking towards the opponent, and then we're gonna ignite, and then we're gonna kill the wave, okay? We have 10 seconds until our ultimate, which means that we want to shove the wave. Usually, whenever you get a kill and you have the ability to shove the wave, please shove the wave. Because that means you can get a recall, you can get tempo, you can get tower play things. What do we want to do here? We have enough gold for Titanic Hydra, so we're just gonna recall. Now, most of you would maybe stay here for tower plating, that's completely fine as well. But what I want to do is I want to use my tempo, and by tempo we mean that uh, we have a timely advantage. Now, probably the right call would have been to recall in front of the tower, but think about it. If the enemy brand is clearing blue side, he could just come and stop my recall, all right? And if we stagger our recall, uh, or, or kind of slow down our recall, that means that the enemy laner can, can come back to lane, and then they can start again harassing us. And here we're gonna open the Vex, once the enemies have committed enough, okay? Once they have committed enough, this, this is a standard example of Silver player, by the way, walking away from Shen Ultimate. Because a good player would have recognized that he can walk towards the opponents here. I'm gonna tax the wave because uh, I can do that. Actually, it's not like taxing, it's more like, you know, just uh, maybe pushing the wave a little bit. When we have Titanic Hydra, you can just use Titanic Hydra on towers, guys. It deals a lot of damage to towers. Now we're gonna run to top lane because the wave is crashing there. It's a cannon uh, wave which means that it will tank the tower for longer, guys. So we will lose the minion uh, experience and gold of the cannon minion, but most likely we will get the rest of them. Now probably we can kill Vayne here again, and remember, don't just engage onto her, don't start with E. 
Just walk up and just start start with Q, okay? She's gonna make a mistake anyways, okay? This is the most important thing, I don't know if I talked about it, but don't start with E in a situation like that. When you can just walk up to an enemy, it's better to save your E after they have used some kind of mobility spell. So if I start with E, Vayne can Q and condemn me away, and unless I have flash, which I had in this case, uh, I, I have no way to close the gap. gap. And if I flash, then Vayne can flash as well, or use Ghost or something like this. Titanic Hydra does big damage to towers, and it's not gonna um, actually activate the splash, so you don't have to fear about taking tower aggro if the enemy is near. Obviously you have to be a little bit careful uh, if the enemy is uh, near, because you might be taking da damage from them at all times. Now we're gonna seem to get uh, grubs here. Uh, or grubs? Grubs? Grubs, yep. We're gonna use our W here to block the uh, Q empowerment attack from uh, Vayne. And now when Vayne goes for this melee minion, look, look, look guys, okay, let me teach you something, okay. Cannon minion, right? Enemies cannot give a cannon minion up, unless, <laughs> unless they just miss it. W, looking good here, blocks the uh, third uh, passive hit from the enemy W, and also blocks the Q extra damage. Now we're just gonna walk up, and we're just gonna do a Titanic Hydra auto attack, okay? Then we're gonna wait for our grass proc again. And we're just gonna walk up. Okay, walk up. Here, we are gonna walk up with a Titanic Hydra out of it. Okay? This seems fine, right? You can do this in your games as well. Okay? We're gonna kill here. Nice. That's the, that's the ignite power right there. I really recommend you to go ignite if you're silver. Because you just get so many more kill opportunities. And you don't know how to use TP correctly, let me tell you. I'm challenger and I don't know how to use TP correctly. We're gonna now use the Titanic Hydra out of the reset to get more damage on the tower. And we're gonna pick up the first blood tower. It's gonna be pretty good for us right now. Uh, and now we can ideally get one more wave shoved out, and this is because we have Titanic Hydra wave here. Titanic Hydra, one of the most important items, probably the most important item that you can buy on Shen, simply because it transforms your champion from someone who can not clear waves to someone who can clear waves. Let's think about what boots we should get this game. They have some CC, they have some CC here, they have some CC here. They also have heavy auto attacker, heavy auto attacker, heavy auto attacker. So we are gonna purchase plated steel cups. Now, tenacity is something that we would like to get, but it's not necessary. For the items, we will purchase something called uh, Iceborne Gauntlet here first. That would be the normal option, but I could also show you something a little bit funny here, guys. You could go Sunder Sky. When you have purchased... Um, let me purchase this first and then sell this. <laughs> I didn't even place the control ward. I mean, okay, that's all right. Uh, maybe it's accurate silver expression by not placing the control ward. But in next game, I will show you where to place the control ward. Um, so, Sundered Sky has a 6 second cooldown, right? Then you have Ingenious Hunter, which reduces this cooldown on every single target. Titanic Hunter cooldown will be reduced by Ingenious Hunter. And we have many other items. I have old items set here on this account. But we have many other items, such as Iceborne Gauntlet, such as Unending Despair. That's cooldowns are uh, all reduced by Titanic Hydra, uh, Ingenious Hunter, I mean. Let me tell you something about Titanic Hydra, right? It got recently changed so that the primary target of your Titanic Crescent, so when you activate it like this, is going to take 110 bonus physical damage. However, what was not nerfed was the splash damage. So actually, in situations where you have the ability to use your Titanic Hydra auto attack on minions or another target, the splash damage will be more than the base primary damage. If I used my Titanic Hydra, she was dead. That's fine. She uses a flash. Uh, we're gonna let that go. We don't need to over chase. I think this is one of the most important things because I would say that out of silver, the way you can climb out of this ranking is simply by not dying. That That's like that's like one way to just climb out of this elo. Like just by not dying. I'm gonna use Titanic Hydra here to do some damage to the tower. Vayne should have recalled by now and probably walking near the inhibitor, so she's gonna be soon here. We are gonna clear the wave and then we are gonna look for an ultimate opportunity. One out of the on the tower, one out of the on the cannon minion to pass the bit. Looks like we can get the whole tower, so we're gonna do that. Okay. 
We're gonna ult an Amum here, since they are fighting. It's important to keep your eyes on the minimap at all times. I didn't need to flash an Ignite there, that's a little bit... Uh, let's say... Um, what's the word for it? It's green. I'm just gonna use the Titanic Hydra out of the there to last it the uh, enemy area. And right now, I think we could just recall. So most of you would maybe stay with your team here uh, to get the waves, but if you look, bot wave is stacking up, uh, and there's no reason for me to stay mid lane. We want to get probably a sheen here to build into an iceborne gauntlet, because if you look at their team, they have um, range champion, range champion, range champion, range champion, range champion. So for me to be able to stick onto these targets, I need some kind of slow, and the best slow item we can purchase is iceborne gauntlet. Version. Looks like our teammates die in mid lane. Uh, now, some of you would say that is my fault for recalling, but I want to ingrain this kind of, I guess, selfish thinking in your head, but I truly believe it to be beneficial at, at this ELO, and at most ELOs actually, is that if you feel like you know for sure what is the right call, like if you have learned from somewhere, that, hey, it doesn't make sense to overstay, just don't. Like, just don't fall into your team's traps. And if you get flamed for it, I don't care. Because you have done the most important thing for solo queue. Which is going into hotkeys, no, interface. And then going here to uh, change chat visibility, pre-made only guys. You don't need to see any, uh, your, your team's chat or enemy chat. <coughs> it's just not the information that you need. I'm gonna get some water. <coughs> Sorry about that, don't know what happened there. Anyways, uh, we're gonna get back into clearing the wave here. And as I was saying, Iceborne Gauntlet will be the item that we are going to purchase. Now, I want to put a uh, normal ward somewhere around the red buff area here. We're gonna get that double down here. Ezreal just barely escapes, we're fine with that. Uses heal. We assume that Neko actually went this way. And we can... Nope. There's a Twisted Fate chasing me. I can probably turn around here. We're gonna use W here to negate a little bit of damage. Okay, let's clean kill under the vein and the Neko. Uh, I just put out this super cheap item, so it's 1700 gold. And we are going to recall immediately when we have that amount of gold. You just want to make sure that you're always strong and you don't overstay with a lot of gold in your inventory because that's the easiest way to throw games. Like, sometimes you just have to think, okay, how's the easiest way I lose this game? And then do the opposite of that, if that makes sense. So if you think about this game now, what do you think is the easiest way to lose this game? Okay, let me just highlight it here a little bit. 700 gold shutdown on yourself, okay? So if I now die, I have to make sure that at least four enemy champions die with me. Do you understand? Okay? At least four enemy champions have to die with me. Because if three enemy champions die, that is 300 gold plus 300 gold plus 300 gold equals 900 gold. But my kill is worth 1000 gold. So whenever I'm in a situation where I have the opportunity to go one for two or one for three, I will not take those opportunities. Because mathematically speaking, I mean, obviously, you're going to get into the details and you're going to say, okay, but think of the experience gained and, and think of the uh, tempo loss from the opposing team. If they lose three members, then we can get an objective. But if I'm purposefully only thinking about what I can do to win this game, I do not want to put myself into a scenario where I can die. Obviously, there is never any kind of riskless scenario. You're always taking some kind of risk when you want to get a reward. But I just want to make sure that I control those risks. So that I'm, I'm not putting myself into situations where I don't want to be. If I don't die, I win this game. It's as simple as that. You can, you can think of the... I think Reckless, actually... Everyone knows Reckless. Like Fanatic Reckless, D1 Reckless, uh, pro ADC player, has been playing League for you know, a long time, right? He said on stream that the easiest way to improve is just to play a game of League of Legends with the objective of not dying, okay? 
So let's do that, right? We have a tanky setup and we're just gonna play with the objective of not dying. We're not gonna overcommit onto anything. If the opponents walk into us, then, then we're gonna fight, okay? Now, am I gonna jump on the... Am I gonna E on the ta Israel here? No. There's no need. I'm putting pressure in the bot lane, okay? If I use my E, that means I have one less safety tool here. But if I have my entire team topside here, they can for sure accomplish something, right? They will accomplish something. Now, I would ideally get uh, some kind of ward coverage, so that I know a little bit more about the enemy team. Uh, and I will do that now. You have to dodge the Ezreal Q here. Okay. We're probably gonna look for an ultimate now, actually. I mean, that move seems like a good target there, but... Okay, let's go. I'm gonna wait for this easy to hit and then stop. Okay. We're gonna get CC here, but remember, we just want to not die. We're just gonna use Titanic Hydra out of that direction, not even using Titanic Hydra. Okay, we got three kills, and, and this is not, again, it's not mechanical gameplay, guys. We're just chilling, okay? And now, instead of chasing for the vein kill, we're just gonna go for the tower. They have no one alive, so just focus on the tower. With the introduction of Touch of the Void through the Void Crabs, you actually have a lot of pressure on killing towers, and Titanic Hydra helps with that immensely. So right here, I'm just gonna take the inhibitor, and then we're gonna back off, okay? Beautiful. Just, just solid clean gameplay, and we don't need to take anything else. Just a recall now. Uh, I could place a control ward, uh, but I'm not gonna, because it will most likely get clear cleared. I can take the red buff if it is up. It is not up. I'm gonna place a control ward here. I got the uh, Krug, but I will not stay here for longer. It seems to be a little bit of a scary scenario. The reason why I'm staying is because I know that I want to get a magic resist item next, uh, but I don't have enough gold to purchase the magic resist item that I want, which is Kainik Rukern. Kainik Rukern should theoretically also benefit from our... Um, wait, is it 2900? Mm, okay. Now, guys... I'm gonna do a little bit, like, this is a little bit um, hard. Oh, okay, that works perfectly, right? Uh, it's either Spirit Visage or Kainik Rooker here. And I actually feel like maybe it might be Spirit Visage time. We're gonna purchase two control wards because we are a team player, right? And we're gonna switch to Blue Trinket. If you see that the Mountain Drake is spawning in 40 seconds, you have two options. You have your ultimate, so you can go into a side lane. But, what I believe here to be the better choice, is actually uh, to simply group up and take the dragon with your team. Why I think that is because I can't get, uh, within 20 seconds, a lot of pressure. Uh, I mean, I could get some pressure. If you look at the map, we have good vision coverage because of my control ward here. So actually, we are able to go top lane here, because our team seems to be in a very safe scenario. So I don't actually benefit them that much in taking that. Break. Now, we're just gonna walk up. Don't use E, guys. Don't use E. No no need to use E. Why would I use E? There is no need. The only way I don't get that kill is if I use E and miss it. So how can we guarantee that I don't miss E? By not using it. I know it sounds counterproductive, but when you're in a scenario where you can win the fight without E, just don't use it. <laughs> I mean, I know I'm, I'm a preacher of this kind of, you miss all the shots that you don't take. But actually, wait, that goes... Huh. This is a philosophical question here. If I don't use E, am I missing it or am I not missing it? And in League, I think the answer is that you are actually not missing it. Because you retain the possibility of hitting it at another time. And you may, might think that I'm not doing anything here, but I'm just I'm just standing still in because I'm in a good position, right? My whole job right here is to apply Baron buff and pressure the opponents, okay? And I don't need to walk up to do that. I can just stand here and uh, apply Baron, Baron, Baron buff on the minions. The enemies will eventually make a mistake. That's what I want you to understand. Is that people will make m mistakes for you. You don't need to force anything because the enemies are going to make the mistakes. Like that, like, why does Vayne fall forward? Because he's silver, right? So you don't need to do much. You can just spectate in these games. Spectate, and when the opponent makes a mistake, capitalize. Don't force anything. 
Play patiently, play smart. Not gonna use the Titanic Hydra auto attack reset again. Always, always use the an auto attack reset when possible because it increases your damage output significantly. Now, look who should be ult. Okay, enemy surrender. That's still very low for you guys. If you enjoyed, subscribe now and then we are gonna go into the next game in Gold Elo. See you there. Greetings, dear viewer, and welcome to the Gold Elo game right here. Today we will be facing another one of the most frustrating matchups in Shen's kind of repertoire, and this is the Mordekaiser. Now, I know you guys must have been frustrated with this matchup before if you ever played Shen, probably any other top laner as well. Like, sometimes it just feels like anything you do, you feel like you dodge from Mordekaiser Qs, you dodge the Es, and then he just kills you with Conqueror and passive. And it's really frustrating. So we are gonna take a bit of a strategic approach here, guys. Instead of going for the typical grasp approach, we're gonna say, okay, okay, Mordekaiser, I see you. You're strong at all ins. Let's see how strong you really are, okay? And we're gonna take lethal tempo as our keystone, right? This is gonna look a little bit weird to you guys, maybe who are new to the channel, new to Shen, new to me. But lethal tempo is actually a fine keystone to take on Shen. And I, and I believe you can make it work in, for example, gold elo, platinum elo. Like, this is completely fine to take. Now we have Triumph, and Triumph is an extremely strong rune, okay? Especially in ELOs where uh, kills happen often, and they happen a lot, okay? I mean, those two things are the same thing. Anyways, that was me just emphasizing the point. So Triumph gives a lot of value, big heals. Then we have Legend Tenacity, last stand, giving you some damage and some... Uh, thank goodness. Okay, well, he misses the first Q. That's already a good start for us. He's gonna kill the minion wave soon. And we're gonna be completely fine with that, and we dodge it. We're gonna do a little bit of a lethal tempo activation here, guys. We're gonna check if he's really down for this fight. Okay, we blow his flash. That's fine for us. We could have maybe waited with the ignite. This is a thing called uh, prompting flash, which is something that you don't want to do when you know you're stronger than the opponent. So I learned this from Chaos, a Talon player, who actively... Um, I need to dodge the E, yeah, okay, that was really important there, because if I get hit by the E and maybe go into his minion wave or even under tower, then we're gonna be in a really bad bad spot. Okay, we're gonna need to relax a little bit here, okay. We, we have our taunt coming up, so we have an opportunity to go in here. I think he's just dead, yeah, he's just dead. Okay, perfect. So, what is prompting flash, okay? So when you know that you're stronger than the opponent, because you have Ignite, and these are, yeah, Ignite mostly, let's talk about Ignite. So, it may make sense to delay your Ignite, because the opponent does not realize you have Ignite, if you know what I mean. Like, sometimes, for example, top laners don't check which summoner spells the opponent has. So then, when you don't use Ignite until the opponent is very low, too low for them to flash out and stay alive, then you get the kill. But if you lose Ignite early, you get a little bit more value out of it in the extended fight, but your opponent may in instantly recognize, oh, I don't actually win this fight, and then they may flash away, like happened with Mordekaiser. It did not matter for us in the end, we're gonna E instantly out, because we know he's gonna look for a Q when we go for that minion. And now is a moment that often goes wrong for you guys. If you have gotten an early kill as Shen, but the opponent TPs back to lane, you need to be quite respective of them, okay? You have to respect them, because they have come back usually with more items than you. Okay, I think Vi is winning. We're gonna do an E flash here on the um, Jax, and that ends up being a kill. A lethal tempo is activating, lethal tempo is activating. And that's another kill. Look, instantly recall. Okay, don't even go touch the wave, whatever. Because the wave is pushing towards you. We're just gonna instantly recall. Our first item will be Titanic Hydra, as always. We're gonna go Tunneler, Ruby Crystal, Control Ward, run back to lane. The wave state was perfect for us for that kind of roam, because the wave is slow pushing towards us, which means that if Mordekaiser comes, he's gonna be losing experience. Oh no, it's not even gonna crash. We can we, we maybe even set up a freeze here, and we have our lethal tempo, so this is gonna be really good for us. It's gonna be really good for us. We actually, I, I do believe that Lethal Tempo actually wins us this game, in the sense that I would not be able to play so aggressively in the level 1 if I had Grasp. I mean, sure I could, but I couldn't do it in the same manner as I did here. Because he does have Conqueror, which is a kind of long fight. Oh no, I'm gonna miss the cannon. Okay, I got it. 
Look for E when he goes to attack minion. Extend the trade. Always walk. We win with Ignite, okay? Use Ignite when he has this, because he, he will heal. And you can cut down his healing. Okay, that's another kill, okay? No, 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 no. Gold, gold Mordekaisers, guys. You can beat them. You can beat them. They might seem stronger. You go little tempo. You do a little bit of hitting, okay? And now, what we will do is we will slow push, okay? Or like, it's like half slow push, but for Shen, even shoving the wave without Titanic high race slow push, because you don't actually have that kind of capability to uh, hard shove the wave. Yeah, we're gonna uh, actually slow down the push here, because we wouldn't have gotten the wave under tower in time before the next wave arrives. So we're gonna slow push this wave, and then, oh no. <laughs> How many cannons have I already missed in this video? Through like four. Um, ideally we get the next wave shoved in. We have to set up a ward, because Jax could come now. Now we want to hit the wave as fast as possible. He's not level 6 yet, so he can't force us to fight. Just hit the minions. Don't let him freeze. Don't let him freeze. Or not. Okay, that's good. We're gonna recall now. Nothing else required, just a recall. We're gonna look for ultimate afterwards. We have a Yorick mid lane, we're gonna come, we're gonna go to buy, okay? We're gonna purchase Ionian boots, because that gives us ability haste on our ultimate. And that's a kill for us again, and we go back into lane. But how, look how crucial Ionian boots here are. 15 ability haste on my ultimate, that reduces the cooldown by multiple tens of seconds, I think 20 seconds actually. So... Next ultimate will be up 20 seconds earlier. Having lots of attack speed requires you to also have a little bit of ability haste on Shen, because if you have lots of attack speed, you won't actually get enough Qs, uh, because you're attacking so fast that you're consuming the Qs faster than you get them. So ability haste starts being really valuable for you at that point. One more. Oh, bone plate, he just came back up and he lived with 2 HP. Nah. Well, sometimes that happens. You're just gonna have to accept the fact that we're not gonna miss the cannon minion ever again. <laughs> Watch me miss, miss it on the next wave. Let's push out the wave. That bone plating was... <laughs> I'm pretty sure bone plating caused him to live. I think it just came up. I'm pushing this as fast as possible while not missing any minions. We have touch of the void here, so we can get some good tower damage and probably get a plating. Very good for us, very good for us guys. Strong. Big strong. We're just gonna stay in lane because we're high HP and we don't have that much kind of item potential in the base. Like we could purchase a long sort, we could sell maybe Doran's shield and get our Tiamat. But honestly, we don't need it right now. We're strong enough in the 1v1. Don't get hit by that. He's level 6 now. Now, now we have to be a little bit careful. Because even this far ahead, a Mordekaiser with ultimate is always a threat, guys. His kit is designed to beat you in a 1v1. He steals your stats. So if you are ahead, he gets more value from his ultimate. Okay, think about that. I have gotten baited so many times because I have gone through a very strong early laning phase on Shen. But then this happens, right? Now we gotta, we gotta dodge the Qs if possible. That's fine. Okay, we still have our flash. I recognize that I'm still stronger there than him. Oh, didn't hit that out. Uh, Jax is coming topside. Now we have got, uh, gotta be really careful. If we die here, it's 450 gold shutdown, by the way. Okay, we can maybe bait the opponent. We can maybe bait the opponent. We can bait him into diving us. That's, that's a possibility here. That's a real possibility. We just have to get our W off if we get stunned by Jax. I'll let the wave crash, it's fine. Let's play this safely, okay? We want to get our Titanic Hydra, that's the item that we want. Okay, beautiful, beautiful. Ah, keep lasting. Ooh, yeah. Ay, one missed. I have uh, attack damage from my runes because I have lethal tempo. So normally I would go for attack speed, uh, but because I have so much attack speed coming from lethal tempo, the extra AD has a lot of value that we get from that. Uh, adaptive force. So I'm actually gonna do a 
kind of I wouldn't call this a cheater recall. So cheater recall is something uh, like a level 3 recall where you shove out the wave and you instantly recall to get 450 gold item like cool for example. Uh, but this is kind of the opposite of it because we are gonna not shove out the wave completely and then we are gonna ult um, and just pretend it's okay. We're just not gonna look top lane and pretend it's okay. Okay, like this this situation right here, Mordekaiser has the 25 seconds remaining on his ultimate cooldown, or maybe even 15. So he's gonna have his ultimate. If he presses ultimate on us, we die. Okay? So instead, wait. What if full breaker first item? Unleash it. Unleash it, guys. <laughs> Skipper, we got the full breaker. Every fifth attack against champions and epic monsters deals uh, some bonus damage and in in this increased the structures. Okay, this is gonna look a little bit troll here guys. I'm not sure if it's good. I've never done this before. I would advise you to never do this. Okay, so this is going against my kind of own argumentation, but like, hey, I just feel like sometimes, sometimes you just gotta, don't don't go for this by the way. Let's, let's not throw the game away, right? Because when you have a minion wave to farm, just farm the minion wave. It's free gold. It's free real estate. Don't do anything stupid like run and chase down uh, the Mordekaiser. The way... Um... Oh boys, what's going on? Yorick is doing stuff. Uh, we have some kind of demon Yorick here in the mid lane. Okay. Our whole team is a demon. What? Let's go let's go top lane and see if we can put the whole breaker into action. Just have to shove out one wave and then we can activate it. So the way this works is it actually stacks on minions. So every fifth attack includes like you can uh, stack it on minions and then it's prepared. So the next time you hit a champion or a, a structure, you are gonna get the extra damage. So the first auto attack that we do on this is gonna deal a lot of damage. 425. Okay. Look mid lane. Can save. I'm gonna get interrupted. But I save Yorick. That's fine. I, I know for a fact that Mordekaiser is gonna interrupt me there, but saving the Yorick with 150 gold shutdown, I'm gonna call it worth. I, I have to get the experience from the minion. I don't wanna lose it. So I take uh, I delay the kill on the ward. Go in here. I'm gonna get the last uh, skipper out of the off to deal a lot of damage. We're still gonna purchase Titanic Hydra, it's just gonna be second item. Because we felt like being a little bit funny and going for this lethal tempo hold breaker setup. I mean, it's been kind of funny. I think we can take the tower down here actually. I'm pretty sure. Jax was bot side. Right? Where did our Y die? Yeah. Just for what's that? Okay, but meanwhile, you are. <laughs> Look, guys! <laughs> we have two hull breakers all the laners. Yorick Shen just taking down the towers. <laughs> Is this normal, by the way? <laughs> just another gold hill game for you guys. I mean, this Yorick understands the fundamentals of taking down structures in order to win games. We're gonna recall here after this. We won't finish our entire Titanic Hydra, but that's fine. Let's not get too greedy. Make sure to always, you know, use your gold and uh, not let yourself be baited into overstaying in situations like this. Where's the control bar? Now here, a little bit of a controversial thing what I did there. So basically I sold my Doran shield for a ruby crystal. What I'm saying there is that I'm preferring 40 health to the enduring focus passive of Doran shield. I don't know if that's correct here. Uh, in my mind, the only kind of argument for that is the fact that Hullbreaker damage scales from your bonus HP, so getting that 40 HP is gonna cause me to deal more damage in the 1v1 scenario versus Mordekaiser. We're gonna keep chasing here. He gets me with the Rai Rai. Rai less. He's probably gonna ult, but I think we just straight on win this one. Unless... Probably gonna have to flash. Yep. So you can see how strong this champion really is, and by this champion I mean Mordekaiser and not Chen. Because if I don't actually flash the Q here, it might be that I die. It's very close. But it's very close to me dying. Uh, it's simply because I have an insane amount of health, 
and Mordekaiser presses ultimate and he gets that health from me. He gets, what is it, 20%? Okay, I, I was scared that uh, Jax was gonna E flash on me there. I, I need 10 gold, by the way, uh, to get Titanic Hydra. I have to go. <laughs> I gotta go. I gotta go get that gold. Uh, I made a mistake. Do I have anything here? <laughs> I think that's the first death of the video. So, we have committed a cardinal sin here, and <laughs> we have greeted for the wave and died for it. Um, our other options were simply recall and wait a little bit to get Titanic Hydra. I would have waited in base for 15 seconds to get that item, and that would have been fine, right? I would have made, maybe waited 20 seconds. But... We ended up falling victim to the enemy uh, Jax, and now Jax gets ahead, he get, got my shutdown. And this is just one of the ways that you can lose a game of League of Legends, right? Overbeating for an item when you're ahead, giving the opponent shutdown. The opponent starts coming back now. They maybe get some Void Crabs off of it, they didn't, in this case, they didn't get Rift Herald either. But, point still stands, okay? Don't overgreed. Even if Axe Petu does it, just, just try not to. I know it's hard sometimes. Like, that, that was not an intentional death. I'm gonna kill the Mordekaiser here. He's mine. Or is he? Yeah, I, I got that. Okay. That's good. Now we can start dealing damage to the... Oh, he's back. I, I win this, by the way. Uh, Jax activates Counter-Strike, making him uh, in dodge all incoming basic attacks and uh, taking 25% reduced uh, damage from area of effect abilities. I'm gonna take a tower here. Look at this damage! Ooh, boom! Boom! Every fifth attack, remember, deals hull breaker. Boom! Oh, wait, there's a shot. Bizu! Oh, oh, oh! Can someone come? Uh, we're fine. More is here? Okay, I'm just gonna run out. Get me out of here. I'm gonna take the red buff here and then recall. I would probably need some magic resist at this point in time. I'm dealing mostly physical damage with my Titan Kyra and Hullbreaker. So Mordekaiser does not benefit from the magic resist. Quicksilver Sash? You know, why not? This allows me to get out of Mordekaiser uh, Phantom Realm, when, Death Realm, whenever I want. And since I had exactly 1300 gold, I will call that, call that a fine purchase. And uh, this is a bad ult. This is a bad ult. This is a really bad ult, because I just wasted a two and a half minute cooldown, because I should have ulted earlier. Why is pinging me, and now why is upset? You gotta think about the emotional damage that you have dealt to your team. And that was completely my bad. You don't start now getting defensive and pinging the Y or, or, or anything like this or, or starting to have some kind of argumentation with the Y. You're just gonna have to accept, yes, I made the mistake. Even if I didn't make the mistake, I'm gonna take responsibility for the mistake that happened. And we're just gonna play our own game and we're gonna be strong. Remember guys what I told you in the silver game. New chat. Disable it completely. I'm reminding you once again, pre-made only. There is no reason to engage in conversation with your solo queue teammates. The best way to communicate is by winning. I'm gonna take the tower down here. I think I'm gonna show, show you how to win like through tower pushing this game. It feels like a tower pushing kind of game. Since we already purchased whole breaker first item. Uh, I'm not walking up here because I don't see any other champion on the map from the enemy team. But I'm staying here because, I mean, I could be taking Gromp, for example. Okay, we see an enemy here because they used the vision cone. But I want to see Jax go bot side before I do anything. Uh, most likely he will go bot side now. I'm gonna stay here until some kind of minion dies. Actually, I think I can stay. No, Mordekaiser Mar recalls. Mm. Wait. It's him! Okay. Uh, my Ignite doesn't actually kill there because he still has W shield available. But this forces him to back and it still retains my combat abilities. So now I can actually pressure the uh, enemy inhibitor quite nicely. 
Remember that if he death rolls us, we can still kill us. And you use Q here to place the blade a little bit more aggressively. Looks like we can just get the uh, tower. Delay our E a little bit there so that uh, the last set of um, ultimate gets casted on our previous location. So I'm probably just gonna have to. I'm just gonna have to recall. Technically, you could buy Mercurial Scimitar to get me some movement speed. Yeah, I have to ult this. Nice. Get out of here now. Dodge those. Dodge the Gene Ultimates. I, I really want to recall. There's no point in me staying here with 2700 gold. I'm just gonna purchase an item now. Probably gonna go for armor because the Jax is beating me quite nicely. Mm, what are we thinking here? Definitely not Sunfire Ages. Thornmail would be kinda nice. Also the opportunity to go for Randuins. Honestly Frozen Heart is probably best. But I want something with HP. Thornmail reduces healing. Do they have a lot of healing? They have Mordekaiser. Having a little bit of healing. It's a little bit of awkward. I could wait for 2800 gold but it doesn't give me any meaningful upgrade. The choice is very difficult right here. It is very difficult. We can go for Unending Despair. I think I will benefit from that most. So, I know it's not good to wait in base for that long, but I kind of want you to guys think about how important purchasing items really is. Like, you should be using time to think about your choices. Ideally, that time is used before you recall, so you already know what you're gonna purchase. But I'm just saying, don't just randomly pick an item because it gets recommended to you. Understand why you are purchasing each item. Uh, and then commit to purchasing those items. And also be adaptive. For example, if you if you want to really go some kind of, let's say, you really wanted to buy experimental hexplate for some reason, but you recall with 2,900 gold, then just finish a legendary with that cost 2,900 gold or less. Like, don't get over kind of caught up in your own ideas about what's a good item here. The best item is the one that you can buy right now. <laughs> okay, that's not always true. But uh, the kind of point I think that it makes is the fact that you kind of have to take into account the amount of gold that you have when you recall. Uh, can I walk up? Do I have vision? No. So why would I walk up? Okay. So instead we are going to go into the jungle and we're going to get some ward coverage. Okay. Vision is very important in League of Legends. I'll put a control ward down here and we're going to spot the enemy fizz. Okay. Then we're going to take this blasting cone over here, get some vision. Not put a trinket there. Okay. And now we have a much safer position. And we, did we lose anything? Oh, we didn't lose anything. We can still go farm the wave. Our unending despair will allow us to heal a little bit. Combat and... Oh. 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 I love it. I can't get into range. My uh, QSS was useless there. I was just spamming buttons. <laughs> okay. I gotta look at all lanes at the same time. See who's dying. See who's not. I should have killed the Fizz 100% there. I, I just kind of stumbled on my own auto attacks. Not knowing what to press. Is it safe to go in? No, it's not. So back off. Don't make stupid mistakes and die here. How much is this upgrade? It's really not worth it to go for this upgrade, but I just kind of feel like doing it because I've never built Mercurial Simitar on Shen, and I kind of want to have that under my belt. <laughs> it's gonna give us a little bit magic resist. It's gonna give us a little bit AD. It's not even gonna give us lifesteal anymore, right? No. I, I, I want it. My precious. Why do I want it? I don't know. It's the luxury of it, I guess. I mean, I, I should probably purchase a real item and not Mercury or Scimitar. It does give us the movement speed. Which can be beneficial. Mm. Mm, I'm gonna stay for Mercury. Oh, no. 
<laughs> I want one more wave. But what happened last time when we wanted one more wave? We died. Okay, so should we do it again? Why not? <laughs> I think it's happening again, guys. <laughs> I think the mistakes were made again. <laughs> Wait, Bart can't take the po What? <laughs> we are ending in bot lane, by the way. Okay, now we can recall. That was all just a time uh, base to get Mercurial Scimitar, guys. <laughs> Sorry, this uh, is kind of deteriorating. The educational aspect of the gameplay is slightly deteriorating. I'm gonna go for the Y here. I think he was just there. A little bit of lethal tempo activation. I'm perma slowed, by the way. <laughs> the Rylas from Mordekaiser is just making me unable to move. Still coming for me? Okay. Enemy fish respawn checks, and that guy are still. <laughs> okay, we we'll one shot combo on the fish. Uh, can I get the cannon minute? Thank you, sir. Okay, I'm gonna finish hitting the inhibitor. Oops. Oh, dodge that. Watch out for the axe. <laughs> Let him jump. Okay, uh, Bard. Going for the portal. I think someone's gonna take it again. We should probably recall. Um, who's killing us? We're taking a lot of magic damage, if I'm being honest. So, go magic resist, yes. Okay, any crooker. Makes a lot of sense. Adaptive building. Think about what you're dying to and then counter items. <sighs> the enemies have an open nexus. So should you run in to the enemy open nexus and end the game? No. Not always the correct move here. Instead, go for Baron. Guys, go for Baron. Okay, stay ulted. We're just gonna make sure the Mordekaiser dies after coming out of the death realm, and then we go for Baron. Okay. Go, go, go Baron. Go Baron team. Go Baron. Team, go Baron. Please go Baron. If Jax comes first, he's gonna kill Jax first. Why doesn't have smite, so he's a bit reluctant, but do we see... We need to see Jax, by the way. We need to find Jax. Okay, we see Jax. It's fine. They have no way to steal. I mean, Zerafult could steal there, effectively, but Xerath wasn't bot lane, so I don't think he makes it in time. But now, we are gonna go into top lane, and we are gonna be a nuisance, guys. Okay, your objective, once again, not die, apply as much pressure while doing it. Okay? We're gonna apply as much pressure as possible without putting ourselves in risk of dying. Okay? If the enemies come... Oh. Am I putting myself at risk of dying here? Most probably yes. Too little tempo activation. Use the Q assess to cleanse the slow from um, from ult on this guy. No, let me go first. Okay, Nico can finish. Go ult. Beautiful. And that's the gold deal all done. We are gonna move into platinum next, and I hope you have learned something. Uh, we're gonna get to the more uh, difficult games as well. So stay tuned. Ah, great is there, viewer, and welcome to platinum. We have the most hated, the most notorious top lane matchup, Ilawi at our hands. One of my most popular videos of all time was a video addressing how to play the Shen versus Ilawi matchup. This video I think has over half a million views and it's simply because Ilawi can be so frustrating to play against. Hopefully I can show you in this platinum game on how to climb in Platinum, but also how to deal with the Ilawi matchup.
for my runes, you might have noticed that I have gone for something different now. I have gone for an Nimbus Cloak, and I have gone for um, Transcendence, alright? So these runes, they act as a extra way of disengaging while retaining Ignite, and that's mostly because of... No, he's not there, okay. So it's mostly because of Nimbus Cloak. So Nimbus Cloak gives me movement speed when I cast the Ignite or Flash, alright? And Transcendence is simply the best option that you can take from the sorcery, uh, aside from Nimbus Cloak. And Transcendence also mimics Ultimate Hunter in a way, because... Um, Immediately. Transcendence gives you Ability Haste, which obviously also works on uh, your ultimate. Remember when possible to clear um, the tentacles. And actually in season 14 now, since patch 4.3, Ilawi's tentacles have 100 extra range. There is no dispute. So you have to be a little bit careful and you have to learn this kind of new range that the tentacles have. Ilawi most likely starts with W and aims to uh, poke you with W grasp, okay? We don't want to take those trades, okay? We don't want to take those trades. If he, you go into range anyways, and here I started with E, which is not a typical start. We're gonna clear the um, um, tentacles whenever we can, by the way. Whenever we can. He's gonna hit level 2 first, so I cannot contest the wave, okay? I cannot go there. He is stronger than me. You just have to understand that when you're playing the versus these stronger champions, it is sometimes necessary to simply give up minions. But never give up XP, unless it's really forced. Right there, I move forward, because I am actually... Um, I have to move out of the... Ooh, hopefully... Oh, I missed experience there. Okay. I was just gonna say, like, always keep an eye out on... Oh, I dodged it. <laughs> it's... Uh, <laughs> the tentacles, it's a mini game, guys. You just have to dodge, dodge those auto attacks. He's still looking for an E proc onto me here, so he's gonna try to hit E. And if, with Ilawi, my, my legendary phrase goes, uh, dodge the E or dodge the game. And it's it's as true as ever, guys. You need to dodge that ability whenever possible. I've gone for attack speed in my stat sh shards, in my rune shards. So I have attack speed and double health scaling. I, this, I believe this is the optimal setup for Shen in this season. You might be noticing that, okay, we have 5 CS down. Uh, and we're just gonna have to accept that. Like, in a matchup such as this, you are happy uh, by not dying, okay? Uh, if you have a CS lead, then that's really good, but it's not its not something you go into the laning phase thinking that, you know, uh, I'm gonna get the CS lead versus Ilawi. It's just not how it works. Here, when we get to a point of having W, we're always gonna think about using our W um, to block Ilawi's Empower Rautelek W. She wants to look for an E, right? But I uh, taunt her inside the minion wave, so she doesn't have an opportunity to... Ah. I mean, well played again. Here I'm gonna defend my... My spirit. Okay, guys, sorry. Uh, like, uh, for even for me, like, I have to focus when I play this matchup, right? I, I can't just uh, be commentating non-stop. I have to think about what I'm doing. Because it is, it is a tough matchup. It is a tough matchup. He, he's, he wants to look for e, flat, uh, e on me here again. Under tower, to poke me. Yeah, oh no, Mr. Academy. <laughs> oh no! Okay, this is gonna serve as a good kind of example of what to do when you're behind. Um, we, we, we have an opportunity here, guys. We have an opportunity, actually. This is our window, I think. Before... Six. I'm gonna use a health potion here, because we're gonna look for a fight right now. We dodged it. Okay. Now ignite early. Get movement speed. So that you can get empowered Q. And here, fla flash kills already, flash kills. But do we need it? Let's do it. Okay. Uh, she has TP, so she will TP here. Uh, the, the the moment that we engage, it is very precisely calculated, guys. It is before any one of us can reach level 6. Because level 6, you have no chance of beating Ilau in a fight. I, I'm gonna tell you that you have no chance. So level 5, when both of us have used a lot of our abilities already, both of us have a little bit of HP missing. I'm gonna ult on Zyra here. I'm gonna save Zyra. 
and that's all we're gonna do. We're gonna install the channel recall now. We're completely fine with that outcome. I don't think they... Surely not. Yeah. Just don't get baited into staying. Recall immediately. Titanic Hydra, still the item of our choice here. We're gonna purchase Tunneler and we're gonna go Control Ward, Refillable Potion. Right? Then we're gonna run towards Scrubs because there's a fight happening. The enemy Lao is freezing the wave in front of her tower. This is a classic Chen vs. Laoi kind of situation. Even though you have killed her, you are not stronger than her. Understand this. So, if the enemy is freezing, the best way to break a freeze is to go do stuff outside of your lane. Because then they will react, oh no, Shen is already roaming, I need to do stuff. But right now, what we need to do is we need to go on the ground. And we're gonna get that kill. The enemy Veigar is here. We have to be really careful of Ilawi. We're gonna space so that Ilawi doesn't get the tentacle spawn from us. And then we're gonna keep fighting here. We're gonna keep fighting, we're strong, okay? We're gonna use both of our refillable potions. And we're gonna kill the Ilawi. And we're gonna keep our E here, okay? Until it's guaranteed. That's fine. And then we're gonna dodge those abilities. And now we're gonna go back to top lane. I don't know why 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 is he coming forward? Oh, because there's a Panther here. Important. Panther damage is crazy. Okay, Panther damage is crazy, gotta get back off. Panther can kill me with one empowered kill. He can maybe still go. I'm gonna use W or Syndra to get Okay, we got the kill. Now, kill this and back. You have to recall, you're too low, okay? But we're in a good position, right? Uh, let's think about the items here. You could purchase an Ionian Boots of Lucidity here, but I don't have my flash up, and that gives me extra value. So I'm actually gonna keep building towards my items here instead. I'm gonna go for this and Boots. Looks like Maokai dies, uh, and I think the enemies got... Or did we get the Grub? We have one Grub. And they have two. Okay. Do we not see the enemy crab buffs, by the way? Touch of the void. You don't see it on the enemies. Or did they despawn? I don't know. I think you should be able to see them in the... Uh... Well, whatever. We have we have one crab buff. I'm pretty sure they should have some. Um... Okay, you have to dodge the Ilawi here. She's gonna look for it. Okay, she's gonna look for it. She, she, she's still looking for it. You, it's a mind game, guys. It's a mind game. You have to dodge it. <laughs> okay. We're not looking for an extended trade. We're just gonna go for a short trade and clear uh, the tentacle. Gonna walk in here to get the minion. Back off. Dodge cues. Always dodge cues. Don't let her get the W on you. Go for a grass prop here. Why not? Go for a little grass prop. Uh oh. Remember, we can't fight this. We can't fight this. If I E there, what she is gonna do is she's gonna instantly cast ultimate and we don't have any way of disengaging. Except we do have Ignite Nimbus Cloak. So actually there was a way to disengage. Okay, she misses Q. We're gonna walk in a little bit. Patience. Patience, guys. Patience most important. You you have no obligation to kill Ilawi. Understand this? It's a mindset switch. Like, no one's expecting you to solo kill Ilawi. So you don't have to do it. Okay? If she harasses you, that's fine. Like, let her have us. Let, let her cook, guys. Okay? We still have our ultimate, remember. Now we want to clear some tentacles. This makes the future fights a little bit easier for us. Looks like we're gonna need to lose the bot lane. I'm keeping an eye out on the bot lane here. Very important. Now, patience. Why would I fight when she has tentacles near? I don't want to fight. Back off. Look to save Lyra here. We are just destroying enemy mental by doing this. I'm gonna get the kill on Pantheon. Look what we are gonna do. We are gonna back off and instantly recall. We are not gonna waste time here. I think one of the most important things that I learned from playing a lot of Shen is the fact that you have to instantly recall when you get a play like this, okay? When you're in the bot lane, if you stay there, the opponent is gonna take your entire tower. I'm gonna lose two, three tower plates for this already. But if I stayed for even half more minutes, like by trying to, for example, get a tower uh, plating back here or helping with the dragon, the enemy is gonna take the entire tower and you're never gonna be able to fight them again in the game. At least now, maybe she overstays because I actually come into lane a little bit quicker than she thinks is possible. 
I'm, I'm fine with fighting this, but I'm gonna lose a lot of CS for it, so I won't. Okay, now we want to push the wave. I'm not gonna hit this, uh, because I actually want to push the wave as fast as possible. Because the Ilawi wants to recall in this position. Perfect maneuvering around there to get the... Um, wait, is my... My spirit is under tower, I think. That's a little bit awkward. I should... Uh, oh no. <laughs> this is the... Oh my! Yo, what? The tentacles are just killing me. You died. <laughs> okay, I can recall now. But that shows you the power of Ilawi. Like, I thought Ilawi is zero mana, 50% HP. So surely I can take a little bit of a trade, but my spirit ends up being under tower. So I should have instantly recognized that and run out of the test of spirit range. So the circle that appears, because then the spirit disappears and you get applied with the vessel debuff. Uh, but, like, oof, I mean, yeesh, that was a little bit of a scary situation. Because if you look, like, we have a big shutdown, obviously it wasn't this big before we killed Gwen, but it's still a big shutdown that we were about to lose. Um, as for our items, let's think about this a little bit. Um, they have CC, they have CC, they don't have that much CC, I don't think Merc Threads are right. I think Lucidity Boots are probably good. Dodge the E. So, uh, oh, I have to teach you guys something. Okay, okay. This is something I realized that I do uh, just recently. Oh, I, I screwed up the last this. Okay. So, imagine there is... Imagine this control ward is the enemy, right? Imagine this control ward is the enemy. When Shen engages on them with an E like this, it's gonna be taunted for a little bit. And what are they doing in the taunt, right? They are just spamming their ability because they want to use their CC ability on you immediately when the taunt times out. So the way I do most of my dodges that seem like uh, some sc sometimes even scripting is that I E, I wait for the taunt duration to run out and then I sidestep, okay? So after Eing, I'm gonna walk in a straight path so that the opponent... Oh, I'm gonna hold on right here. But only when the time is um, enough. Now here we're gonna actually push the wave. I'm losing top tower anyways. Okay, top tower is gonna die. So I'm gonna stay here to guarantee that we get the bot lane tower. I don't know if we can get it first, but at least we can get it, okay. I'm gonna use my Q on the set here. Uh, and by Q I mean like getting the um, drag through. So that um, I get the enhanced attack speed from Empower Q. Nice. We're gonna stay for one more wave. You should recall. You should really go. Um, Ilawi took top tower. I need my boys to top lane. But I can stay here because I didn't have a perfect recall yet. Are they? I, I don't know. That that was weird. I, I would not expect Pantheon to jump onto me if, she, if he was low. So I, I purposefully kind of did not at all interact with him. I mean, I did a little chunk. But you can always get away with a little chunk. I don't, I don't have my summoner spells, so I have to be super careful here. Okay, super careful. But you you understood what I, what I said. So basically, I taunt someone, then I walk like this, and the moment the taunt duration ends, I'm gonna sidestep. Because for example, with Ilawi, I taunted her, and when uh, I'm taunt, when she's taunted, and I'm next to her, she's gonna think, Oh, I want to cast E, I want to cast E, they're gonna be spamming E, and then the moment they come out of CC duration from the taunt, they're gonna cast the, cast the CC, and then you're gonna sidestep, because you know the taunt duration exactly. So you're gonna look like you're scripting, okay? It's not rocket science. It's not actually rocket science. This is a little bit scary. Oh! Nice E by Pantheon. I thought I could get my co full combo off, but uh, Pantheon blocked my uh, Titanic Hydra empowered auto deck. I'm still gonna stay here, because I can actually clear the waves. But... I have to get the, yeah, I, I E in there to get the kind of minion experience because I was too far back. I just have to be a little bit careful so that I don't get dove. And here, auto attack the minion uh, that is highest HP because your splash damage from Titanic will be enough to kill the minion that is low HP. 
So instead of attacking the center one and then dealing a little bit of damage to the miniature's high HP, we attack the high HP side one <laughs> and miss cannon. <laughs> Why am I even talking about this CS strategies when I can't get cannon? Um, I'm gonna recall before ulting. Uh, I'm thinking of lucidity boost this game. And then I want to go... What do I even want to go? This is quite difficult actually. You know what? Actually, I'm gonna show you a little something here. I'm gonna show you a little something. I'm gonna go for... What is it called? Um, hull breaker, okay? Yeah, a little hull, hull breaker attack here. Actually, is it good? Yeah, it's good. Trust. Sorry guys, I took a little bit too long for that recall. It's just that their team comp is very weird, so there's no like ob obvious items for me to buy. I go for a whole breaker here, try to split push. It's not worth to ult there because... Uh, okay, I should have looked at the situation, because then I would have had more information to evaluate the situation and make uh, the corresponding right decision. But um, my intuition told me that Saira in a one versus four situation is not gonna live. Regardless of a Shen ultimate. Now they can be here, but I have my flash, so I can play a little bit more aggressively. Right? Play a little bit more aggressively. We're gonna put a ward down here, because the enemy jungler would most likely be here. I'm gonna clear the tentacle. Um, that's fine. He's, he's gonna get uh, extra movement speed from the Empower uh, B. Okay, we're gonna kill the Fountain. And then we're gonna clear that ward. Probably I have to recall actually and go top lane. Shindra is well playing uh, here. And uh, gonna go for the Rectrix here, get the movement speed. A very weird item for Shen, but uh, since it builds into Hull Breaker, we're happy to buy it now. Mm. I can get bot lane. I'm gonna stop set from from pushing here. Yeah, actually, you know what? The the void, um, touch of the void doesn't actually show up on enemy uh, buff bar. It's kind of interesting, actually. They do have it. They have two stacks of it. But I guess you can deduce it from the amount of stacks that you have. But it's not always obvious, actually. It's interesting that it doesn't show. I guess it's not like combat information, but regardless. Uh, are we good versus this Gwen? I mean, I don't think we actually want to fight her. I'm gonna, gonna look to... Mm, we can look on Vayne if we want. Yep. They're gonna die here. Uh, I could've E-flashed and killed Veigar, but I don't think it's worth my flash in that situation. Like, I'd rather save my flash for a better opportunity. Also because there is a slight amount of risk involved. Vegar has to back off anyways, so he can't stay. So this is like a like a minor death as well. Like just having to um, go back into your base. Mm, okay, we're fine with this. Remember what we learned in the silver game, right? Not dying is the most important thing you can do for your team. Sometimes obviously it's technically mandatory to die in order to get the best value. For example, when you're playing a tank, you would think that, okay, in some team fights, you're just gonna have to die. But I don't really believe in that as a general mindset, because it's like very situational. And most, most likely, like 99% of your deaths, they are not good, right? There's gonna be one in 100 deaths that you are confident about. There was no other way to do that. Most likely, you're not the boss. You don't understand how to do deaths correctly. And this is not me being like, I don't want to... Uh, again, like condemn you guys for not being challenger players. I just want you to understand your own level And I think this is part of like I, I also have to understand that I'm not a mechanical beast Like I, I'm not the best player in the world. I can't just flash every ability or like react to every uh, Be really careful there Enemy surrender here. So that's gonna be the platinum game. It's a solid game versus in Malawi early laning phase patience And then you were rewarded level 5 Let's go into the Emerald game next. That will be interesting. Ah, greetings again, and welcome to Emerald. We are on the verge of getting into diamond territory. The goal, it is within our grasp, as we have taken grasp of the Undying Sarkeestone once again. However, 
Emerald can be a little bit difficult for you guys. Alright, there's gonna be some challenges. People start getting pretty good at the game. You're gonna have people in Emerald games who have played the game for over 10 years already. Okay? And they're gonna have a lot of understanding of their champion and also all the champions in the game. In silver and gold elo, you can get away with the opponent not understanding what your champion does. Not here, Volibear is running lethal tempo. Do we want to fight a lethal tempo Volibear level 1? We certainly don't, okay? That guy is gonna maul us to death. We are strong in short trades. However, Volibear is also a champion and strong in strong... strong uh, uh, let me refresh. Volibear is also strong in short trades. The way we need to win this matchup is by taking smart trades, okay? Immediately. We're gonna be actually... We might have to cover for Udur, because if Volibear decides to go level 1 invade here, which could be possible with his Ghost Ignite, it might be really uh, difficult for our Udur to deal with that. So I'm actually gonna check if Volibear is here. There He's is. not. He was waiting in this push. That's something I learned actually from playing uh, this season, that there was a Udur player who level 1 uh, went to invade my jungler, and it cost us the entire game. Many of you might remember it if you watched my first stream the season. Um, but yeah, uh, smart trades are done by utilizing your W and your passive shield primarily, okay? Your W and passive shield are where your skill expression in trades comes in. Because a good time W, a well timed W rather, is insanely valuable versus a champion like Volibear. But a bad W will leave you open to all his damage later on. With W, oh, well played Vayne in the bot lane, good shot. With W, you can block Volibear's um, Q, stun, but you can also block his W damage. We're gonna just use our passive shield here to negate the, um, the E from Volibear. I'm not actually sure if I block the E, because I think... Oh, I'm not running other speed, by the way. <laughs> I'm running uh, 180 shard for the short trade power. Um, so that cost me to lose a minion there. I'm just gonna stack up my grass. We don't need to do anything rush, guys. We have double scaling health runes. Okay, he uses his W. But now we have a mark applied on us, okay? And now Volibear is super strong. Look at this, Frenzy Maul. Keep an eye on that, because it will deal extra damage. Get out of W range. It's most important to get out of W range. If he gets W heal off there, you lose the trade hard. But now we are strong. Oof. Short E. Short E. No, I didn't get it all. Oh, it was so close, man. Nah. Let's get this first. Oof. Oof. <laughs> what an intense early game. All right, so wait. Did I have Q up? Would Q have me faster? I think both my E and Q were coming up really soon. I had used my W, so that was not up. Um, I thought my E will go faster, so I pressed E. I could have pressed both abilities at the same time. Um, what I'm trying to do there is I'm trying to get the key barrier, and key barrier activates after casting an ability. So when you're in a scenario where you need to get the E shield as fast as possible, what you want to do, uh, passive shield as fast as possible, you want to cast E like this, because your E can go in a long range or a short range. If you cast it at the minimal range, um, then it's gonna back off. So important to block the stun there. If I don't block the stun there, I will get hit by uh, Volibear's entire combo, right? You will get hit by his E and all this sort of damage. So your W is the key to this matchup. He's ahead um, in experience here. But we're gonna have to be a little bit careful. I'll last it safely. Push the E. Stay away from the minion wave because you are taking damage constantly from the passive auto attacks from Volibear. Nice. And just his Q. Last it is. Like, understand that his champion again is generally stronger in a 1v1. But we have our advantage, which is our ultimate. We want to play the map, okay? Volibear is interested in winning the battle. I'm interested in winning the war. Okay, that's the difference between me and Volibear here. He's running full greedy setup, only itemizing for lane, only throwing runes for lane, but I have my ultimate. And that's the difference. Ah, and he gets a W off. 
I, I was I was looking for that W. He he purposefully, by the way, didn't engage with Q because he learned from last time that if he goes for a telegraphed Q, I will just simply block it with W. So this time he went in and out to try to um, kind of bait my W, but I just simply activated it later than I should have. He's gonna hit level six on this wave, so we have no no business fighting. Okay, we have no business fighting. But take a look at bot lane. Bot lane is winning. So do we need to force a bad trade in top lane? Heck no. Heck no. Okay. We can just play to our win conditions. Watch the E. Okay. Take it easy. Farm up. Oh, got the cannon. But I'm gonna lose the next minion. So I'm gonna dream. Maturely hit the backline minion. To prepare it. Um, for my next last hit. Yes, I got it. So there it's really important to uh, wait for your queue. Look here, put on the lane. Maybe can kill Kha'Zix as well, if Bards gets stunned here. No. Instantly recall, instantly recall. Don't stay, don't stay, recall. You have to go back into lane, you have to go to mid lane, pick up the farm, do all these sort of things. There's no 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 time to waste in bot lane, okay? Instant recall. This is one of the most important lessons that you have to learn. I don't know, maybe Quake kills Volibear here actually. Oh no. Oh he has QW. Uh, he can use QW to snipe. QW there. Nice! I see you, Way, I see you. You're a beast! Come on, your Emerald teammates are beasts, guys. Okay, yeah, he's shoving the wave out. I should have maybe gone mid lane, but it is what it is. I'm just gonna go for tower plating then. That's nice. I see you wave. But here again, like, comes to the part of understanding uh, other champions as well. So Emerald players, they start to understand other champions as well. I'm just playing my understanding of way. Uh, by understanding what way was gonna do there. If Volibear understands way as a champion, then he realizes that, oh, Wei is actually moving forward here to try to cast QW artillery on me, so I need to be able to sidestep it as soon as it comes. But, unfortunately, I mean, fortunately for us, Oliver did not demonstrate this kind of superior knowledge. When he marks you with W, you have to be really careful about what happens next. Because now, I, I'd rather just not even take the chance of him... Um, getting his uh, second W on us. It deals extra damage and it heals him, okay? So even if you block the first W, you're still gonna get the mark applied onto you, and that's gonna set him up. I'm gonna just E out here. Uh, I'm gonna ignite early, it seems. I have my W, so there's no way I die here. Good job, Udur gets a kill. Um, what should we do here? We don't have enough wave there to push. So we're gonna actually just set up a freeze here. Slowly last hit the minions. Make sure our own minions die in the process. Now thin out the wave a little bit so that you don't it doesn't become unmanageable. That's kind of a word I want to use for the wave. So when the enemy minions have more HP like this, uh, it can become unmanageable and when Volibear returns to lane he can just crash the wave. I mean most likely he can crash the wave anyways. But my point being here is that uh, when you start a freeze, you never want the minions to have an overwhelming force that you can no longer clear. Especially if you're a champion such as Shen, who doesn't have any kind of fast ways of clearing a wave. I'm gonna lose the outer melee minion here. I, I don't think I can do anything about that. I'm gonna have to look at the bot lane. Oh, for the pain. Polybert might stop me. No, he doesn't. I'll take the portal here. Flash out immediately afterwards, don't even have a chance of dying there. I'm gonna recall. Um, I could stay and try to greet to get Titanic Hydra, but I'd rather not do that. I'm just gonna purchase Tiamat here, purchase my boots, and we can complete Titanic Hydra on the next pack. What did we learn uh, in the gold elo game? Remember the gold elo game? We were playing versus a Mordekaiser and the enemy team had a Jax and we were in this situation right here and we had these exact items and we had 530 golds and we decided to go for a minion wave at low HP and died to Jax, gave a shutdown and that was a huge mistake that we made. And that was simply because we started greeting for uh, the item, okay? Don't greet for the item.
Let's do what is correct, okay? Sometimes it is game changing to have a certain item for a certain fight. But when it's just a matter of you recalling safely or recalling with high tempo uh, or losing your tempo and greeting for gold, try to take the save option here. Take the tempo, take the fast recall. Oh, I lost that minion though. I don't really prefer to be in mid lane versus Seraph, so I'm gonna ping way now to sweep, uh, swap lanes. Way is gonna TP bot. With that amount of HP, it works. No, he dies. Volibear is scary here, guys. He has his mark applied onto us. We are not really interested in fighting. Don't even think about going through that path. He still is a bolly bear with lethal tempo, and you don't even have your Titanic Hydra completed. So we're just gonna take the safe path around. Again, remember W blocks, but it doesn't block the Frenzy Mall activation. So now we are very weak uh, when we have that on us. If he steps forward, I can go for this, but then I have to back off immediately. If I even out attack once there, I can take half of my HP, okay? It was it was quite scary for me to even go for that amount of damage. So I simply went for a, a taunt because my minions will deal damage to um, him and afterwards. Ah, I didn't quite have enough AD to kill that. It's okay. I have my ultimate in 15 seconds. Uh, we have to remember smart trades. Don't overcommit onto anything. 10 seconds on our ultimate. Way has to flash mid lane. I'm down to clear this wave and recall. And then ult. Ah, I should have cast it faster. Maybe he doesn't he's used E here. He might come and stop me still. I need to get my recall off before ulting. I'm gonna go for this and a cloth armor. Then we're gonna look for ultimate. Did he get a kill? Oh, my bad. I didn't think about saving way there, but... I'm ready to go for this. I, I think Udur can beat them. I'm just being that I have my ultimate. Wait. <laughs> what was that amount of damage? Why? What was that damage that came onto... Oh wait, Udur has Hexblade first item. Okay, that's my bad. I, I should never have pinged him. I should never have pinged him, guys. He got a little bit too excited about my ultimate pings. Can we engage on this Volibear? Yes, but do we know where NM Jungler is? No. So don't engage when you don't know where NM Jungler is, because that might be your last action as a champion. And we are instead just gonna poke with our Titanic Hydra. Okay, he goes in like that, obviously we're gonna take that chance and kill him. But we didn't need to commit earlier, like, for sure there's a possibility of you killing there, but what if the Bolly Bear is just waiting for his jungler, and Kazis is waiting for you in the next push, and gonna come with ultimate. So then what, yeah? Then you give a shutdown, then what? Then you're gonna lose the game, that's what. Back off here. Start hitting the wave next. Think about our item choices already. When you, when you have this kind of time where you don't have your ultimate and you're simply clearing a wave with nothing else to do, think about what item you're gonna build next. You could maybe go for uh, steel caps, right? Steel caps could be good, but they only have one heavy auto attacker. So maybe steel caps is not the right choice. Do they have a lot of CC? They have Bolivar stun, but that's avoidable. Do I want to engage onto this? Probably not. I'm just gonna back off here. Kite for Udur. Okay, he uses ultimate. That's fine. I'm gonna take the wave. Mm. I'm thinking we need a resistance item. Maybe Iceborne Gauntlet. Just gonna finish the kill here with the E flash. Um, but we're gonna back off. We don't want to overstay. If I see Kha'Zix or Zerap both sides, okay, I can take the wave now. Oops. <laughs> I get one, but I miss one. Plus, <laughs> plus minus zero. Okay, now the wave is a little bit better, so it's gonna bounce back towards us. Um, let's get the recall off here. Don't greet for tower damage. We could... Yeah, we're gonna need boots here. 
Um, I'm gonna go for iron and boots, and then I'm gonna go for uh, I think Iceborne going to this the right option. Oh no, I used my ultimate too. Uh, I used my E when I shouldn't have. I'm not gonna use ulti there on Bard because Bard is not worth saving. I'm sorry, Bard, don't take it personal. But I'm gonna use ulti here on Wei because Wei has a shutdown. I'm gonna go into lane. Let's take the minions. Bard is. I'm gonna uh, kind of put some pressure on the tower here. Maka is looping around, gonna ping his Bard. Get the entire wave with a Titanic Hydra. Is this scary for us? Yeah, a little bit. Do I care? Not really. I missed. Okay, we're gonna have to relax a little bit. Look, we already have Icebound gone if you want. And just clear this wave and back off. Udur? It's time. I to dodge the Draven too, aren't too damaged, but I didn't quite get it. Uh oh. Control bar here. Touch those. I still have E. Touch it. Does he have ultimate? Run, run away in case he has ultimate. And run towards a location he would not expect. Keep running, keep running. I don't know if Zerath. Okay, he's hot. Okay. Magic damage is gonna be a problem at some point. <laughs> At some point. We can still manage with our HP, but we're now gonna finish the Icebound Gauntlet. Uh, we could sell this and get the uh, Null Magic Mantle. It's probably the right call, so we're gonna do it. Okay, we're gonna be smart today. Uh, you could also think about purchasing Farsight Alteration at level 9 now. Uh, I'm gonna keep my Warding Trinket because I'm... I mean, okay, actually I think it's a, it's a mistake to keep Warding Trinket. I could just go for the blue, blue one already. Because I want to be pressuring towers and it's easier for me to get vision of where the enemies are if I have the blue trinket, Farsight Alteration. But it is what it is, we can swap it next time if we remember. It's not something that decides the outcome of the game. Like that's that's one of the things that doesn't, like Warding Trinket, Stealth Ward is still a completely fine option at this stage in the game. We're gonna see Volibear here, but I'm not gonna overcommit onto that because we don't know where Kha'Zix is. And Kha'Zix is the champion that can kill us. Yeah. He has damage. He has damage to kill anyone. The whole breaker is making the minion quite tanky. So we're gonna wait to secure it. I want to get a control ward off in the enemy jungle here. Now we feel quite safe. Back off. Okay, don't let him retaliate. W, block that. It's smart trades, guys. I'm being very like difficult for the volley bear because I'm not giving uh, any possibilities for counter attack, right? I'm being really annoying. That's fine. Did I even auto attack him? No, I didn't. I didn't take tower either, so we're chilling. We're gonna have to look for a little bit of main here. Yeah, all good. Cancel me, cancel me, cancel me. Thank you. <laughs> it was a bait. <laughs> I was merely yesting the Volibear to go in. <laughs> oh no, I missed the cannon. Oh no. I said I wasn't gonna miss any more cannons. But here we are again. Just me. And the vast amount of shame. The shame of missing a cannon minion. Let me clear these Krugs. We could probably finish killing the tower as well. Um... Yep, we see Kha'Zix there. It's a little bit scary here. One more out. I'm gonna take the Rifter out here and go for a little escape route. See you later, Bako. <laughs> thanks, 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 Udur, for the contribution. Oh, wait. Oh, wait! 
He's coming back here. What we learned here is you can use Rift Herald as an escape option. No, I'm dead. Oy, what have I done? Ah, man. Like, I had to burn my flash because I didn't actually do my auto attack reset correctly with Titanic Hydra onto the Kha'Zix, so he actually lived after coming out of my taunt duration. <laughs> We're gonna have to relax here a little bit. I'm taking a lot of magic damage from Zeraf. Um, I would go for Kenny Kruger here. I think it's the obvious choice against a uh, poke mage like Zeraf. Okay. Good, doing some activation technology on the exper experimental hexplate. Wait, is this actually cooked, bro? He has Ingenious Hunter, so he's constantly activating. Right, he must be running Ingenious Hunter since he has Domination 3. Brother has cooked something, I think. So he's constantly getting 30 attack speed and 15% movement speed from this item. Wait a minute. I think this Udur's cooking, bro. <laughs> Why does Udur's names always be like Swagus Magus or like... I don't know. I, I swear Udur players have the weirdest names. I'm just gonna go and split push now. Uh, for our fourth item, I'm thinking of a health item now, since we have both resistances at 140. Patiently clear this. Kha'Zix fighting. Missed it. Back off. I stunned my butt. Uh, could Maokai be here? Yes, they can. I'm dead. No, I'm fine. Uh oh. Ah, oh, man, this guy is really dealing a lot of damage. We have made a couple of mistakes in the row here. Um, wait, does that kill? Forbidden way one shot combo. <laughs> This man. <laughs> the Maka is a real problem, man. Like, this Maka just keeps running in and seeing me, and the Draven gets free hits on me. I mean, okay, I, uh, this was super greedy. Like, okay, the thing that I was thinking about in my head is okay, Zeraf is busy ulting these guys, so I'm gonna go walk up towards him and kill him. But obviously, Zeraf is not gonna have the map awareness of a complete noob. He's just gonna finish casting his ultimate, and then he's gonna CC us if we go near. And also, we didn't have any information on Marka and Draven, so why are we walking that far up? Okay, we gotta stick to the fundamentals here. You don't get free wins in Emerald, okay? You make a mistake, people are gonna capitalize. Okay, it's punishing. It's brutal out here, guys. It's brutal out here. We're gonna switch to Farsat Alteration now, finally. We, we don't afford mistakes here. Next mistake costs Ocean Shoal. Boom, you lost the game, okay? You're never reaching Diamond like that, okay? You gotta be surgical. You gotta be surgical. No mistakes. Think about it this way. You die, your patient dies, okay? It's 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 human lives on the line here when you're playing League of Legends in Emerald Elo, okay? Any mistake can cost you a death. Um, let me just finish clearing this wave. Now we're gonna okay, now we're gonna do really surgical split pushing. Guys, I'm gonna show you. First of all, we establish a line of vision using our control parts. And press a control part here. We see two people, two of the highest damage champions in the enemy mid lane. We are stronger than this guy, by the way, in a 1v1. We are stronger than him. But we can't just face tank his damage, okay? Make him work for it. Make him work for it, guys. He wants it, he needs to get it, okay? Just make him work for it. Don't face tank him. You're, you're not a Darius, you can't face tank him. No matter how fed you are, you can't just face tank a Bolivar with lethal tempo. Now he has used his ultimate, he has used his ghost, right? He has used all, all this stuff. Hello there. Do we need to kill him? No, we don't. What we are doing right here is we are staggering his death, okay? 
He's gonna die eventually, okay? I'll tell you, he's gonna die eventually. We can just choose when he dies. Which way did he go? What do you think? Okay, he went this way. We're gonna E here to close the distance a little bit, okay? He's at low HP. <laughs> I mean, he could have come for... I mean, it's fine. Okay, maybe he's not gonna die. I mean, he's gonna die eventually, okay? He's gonna die eventually. Do we take the long path? Let's take the long path, okay? He needs to swap direction again, okay? Look, look, guys. We need this guy, okay? This is good. This is good right here. He's gonna die, and then his teammates are going to be alive. Okay, okay perfect. That's really nice. If you just take the inside track there, he's forced to run out. And look how much time he wasted, right? And now he's dead, so we have uh, an opportunity where we're stronger than the opponents. How tanky is this Marta, by the way? Let's just ignite there to finish the kill. Get the control bar. Let's... Oh, I see you. W, W instantly. Oh. Saved him. My W didn't block anything, actually, but uh, my ultimate saved him. Doosh, doosh, and Titanic, boom, splash. Uh, do we see enemies? Draven cannot kill us alone. Xerath and Draven are the only ones alive. We know that Xerath is topside, so we can go and hit this. Use Q to activate Sheen. Hit the tower with the Titanic reset. Use W for a Sheen proc here. Get the minion wave, and we have enough gold for an item. Which item will it be this time? Let's take the blue buff first. Let's figure it out. I'm kind of love in in love with the idea of, for example, Sundered Sky here. Riftmaker would also be. I'm gonna go Riftmaker. Yeah, I'm gonna go Riftmaker. We have. Uh, yeah, I, I I just think Riftmaker is good here. It's a feeling. My team is already fighting. I want to get a recall off first. It's not good though. I wait, I don't even have ultimate, what am I talking about? <laughs> For some reason I thought I had ultimate. Okay, that's another lesson guys. Always check you if you actually have your ultimate. Well, we're just gonna go bot lane now. We have four stacks on ultimate hunter, we're still missing the bounty on Zerath. Way is doing work in the mid lane. This one is tank- oh no, I missed it. I'm gonna slow him. We have our eyes on. Now we are at we are at Darius levels now. Okay, we are at Darius levels because we have a Rift Maker. Wait, 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 wait. Map awareness. Okay, he he's just too good for us. What? <laughs> Guys, is that normal? That normal way gameplay? I guess it is. It's the Emerald players, man. They are they are built different, guys. But the Rift, uh, Rift Maker here, pretty strong item. Not gonna lie. The Omni map in particular uh, makes us quite tanky. And in season 14, Omni map actually heals fully effectively from area of effect damage. Previously. Omnivamp only granted 20% effectiveness when dealing, or actually one third effectiveness when dealing area of effect damage, but it was changed. And now, since Riftmaker is the only source of Omnivamp, this is kind of the item that benefits from area of effect abilities. And it also comes from stuff like Titanic Hydra. So when we are doing Titanic Hydra auto attacks inside the enemy team, I'm getting 100% effectiveness on my 10% Omnivamp, which makes me quite tanky. Since we do deal a little bit of area of effect damage. Also, my E gets full efficiency now. Uh, can we stay here? Heck no! Heck no, guys! Get out of there! Like, we don't have any vision. We don't know where the opponents are. I could die at any moment. Remember, surgical precision. A mistake equals a death. Just clear the Kromp while you're at it. Okay? Again, don't make it too easy for the opponent. Imagine the... Gonna try to save Bane here. It doesn't work out. Volibear is running. My team does amazing work here again. Way is just the monster. Does he die to red buff here? Yeah. yeah, I'm gonna keep pressuring bot side. I'm completely negating Volibear's effect on the game. His entire kit is focused on split pushing and he's not getting to do that.
Yes, I know I missed the E flash. It's just simply because I'm not in range. Does it matter? No, because we have Ice Bomb Gauntlet, which means our next auto attack will slow the opponent. By killing Vol Volibear here, we essentially guarantee ourselves uh, the inhibitor and actually a top inhibitor as well. A little side price on the side. <laughs> side price on the side, what am I saying? <laughs> Let's just take the inhib. I'm gonna gain, regain a little bit of energy by other the minions and consuming my two stacks. And then we're gonna go for Baron. Oh, Mark, I misclicked, but. I'm gonna back off here. That is maybe ulti for us. Back off, back off. No need to over chase, okay? No need to over chase. 2200, that could be worth a moonstone here. What if we just rush Baron with Bane? Yeah, we have enough DPS to do that. I'm gonna where should I ward? I'm gonna ward over there. Hello there, Baron. There are now three different Barons in the new season. Uh, and all of them have kind of different abilities. I'm not actually... I don't remember all of them by heart yet. My main point being is when you're fighting Baron, uh, think about actually dodging the abilities that they cast. Uh, for example here, that Lash. Uh, or what is that kind of... Uh, I guess it's a Lash. A tentacle Slash or something. Uh, just dodge it if possible. And versus the classic Baron, he's gonna do the fire kind of uh, like uh, circular attacks that knock you up. You gotta dodge those because it's gonna reduce your DPS effectively if you get knocked up. Um, we could go for an Anathema's Chains here and put it on... Mm, yep, there's a... I feel like that's kind of game over for the opponents if I go Anathema's here. From the shadows. Now, three targets that I would put this on. Draven, Kha'Zix, and Zeraf. Who's gonna deal the most damage to me? Probably Xeraf. Actually no, because I have Kenny Crooker. Probably Draven if he gets the chance. However, think about the... Um, I'm gonna put it on Draven. <laughs> uh, so there's potential there to put it on um, Kha'Zix, because then we would make more use out of the Vengeance, a negative tenacity, or uh, like reduced tenacity. Uh, but by putting this Anathema Chains on Draven, I guarantee myself to be kind of unkillable in these fights. And if you remember correctly from our lessons in the previous games, by not dying, you essentially win the game. I have 5500 health, I have an Anathema Chains put on um, the enemy carry, so I'm feeling quite confident about winning this game. Just gonna ult on the Vayne here. Whew. That looked like my E did a 6,000 damage there, but it was just a vain auto attack at the same time. And we are gonna finish off the game, and we have essentially won the Emerald game. Not essentially, but like in practice. And next up is gonna be the last game here, the Diamond game, the finale of the How to Actually Climb the Diamond. I hope I'll see you there. And greetings, dear viewer. This commentary, I'm already starting loading screen to give you a kind of disclaimer, because... Uh, this is supposed to be a diamond game, showcasing you how to win in diamond then, once you've climbed there, or you know, showcasing what the skill level needs to be in order to be in diamond. However, my diamond account has accidentally reached Grandmaster MMR, uh, so, so we're gonna be having a couple of master tier players here, a couple of Grandmaster players and a challenger player in the lobby as well. I, I still think this is a good example of kind of the level that you need to be at. And a master tier Darius, like, let's say, if you can win the Shen versus Darius, when the opponent Darius is a, a master tier one trick pony, then you're in a good situation, you're a good kind of position to get into diamond. So I think this will do just fine for our final game in this video of how to actually climb the diamond with Shen. And hopefully the game is gonna start instantly as I stop my commentary here. Let's go. Come on. Three, two, one. Come on, buddy. Hey, let's go. Okay. We're gonna start off with Doran Shield, right? Super standard. And let me show you an invade, guys. You, you, need, to, you need to be doing this invade, trust me. This is, this is the best invade you can do on blue side right now. I'm just gonna ping aggressively for my team to react to this, okay? So we're gonna go directly into the bush here, right? And we're gonna walk to this side of the bush, okay? We're gonna wait until 0, 4, 5 seconds, and then we're gonna take this wall here and we're gonna E-flash on top of the enemy vehicle that's gonna be waiting in this bush, okay? Remember, 
Wait, 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 wait. 045 is the timer, okay? <laughs> okay, we get a bard, okay? But sometimes, let me tell you, in your games, there's gonna be an enemy Viego standing right there. You're gonna E flash on top of him, or just E even, and then you're gonna get a free kill. And that's gonna be really nice for you to start off the game. But we still get a bard, which means we get an XP advantage. Obviously, the problem here, we're gonna ping that ward. Uh, so we have a timer on it, is that uh, opposing bot lane has now gotten full priority over the lane, so Senna and Tom Kench cannot take control of the bushes, but that's kind of the... I mean, hmm, there's the possibility of me leashing here for Graves, because I'm not going to be doing anything level 1 versus Darius anyways, he's just stronger than me, so I'm actually going to give a little, little bit of a leash. Okay, he doesn't want. Then we won't give a leash. He's happy. Oh, I'm going to help. I'm coming, I'm coming. We got the grass proc here. We're gonna tank the blue buff as well so that Graves can finish it. They're fine, right? We're gonna now run into lane. I'm pretty sure Graves can finish it, yeah, at that HP. Try to get the experience. Okay, we got the experience on two, two of the melee minions. That's completely fine. Uh, the enemy Darius is gonna be stronger than us when he comes back because he's gonna be full HP. So I'm gonna have to put a ward down uh, into this push because if... Um, if the enemy jungler comes, then we need to be aware and so that we can react in time and not make a crucial mistake. I'm running attack speed, which let me uh, out uh, last hit those minions so very nicely. And get that minion. We don't want to be fighting in this lane right now. Uh, we want to make use of our gold uh, eventually. We see, by the way, look, look guys, ward. Okay, we see Viego topside. We have to be super careful now, okay? We have to be super careful. If we die to Darius, we have solo lost the game for our team. I walk back into my W there to block the last auto attack from Darius, so that I don't get the bleed applied onto me, and I think we win that trade because of it. We are gonna chill, guys. No need to go for these minions. If you lose 300 HP, for a range minion last hit. Is it worth? No, not. Just relax and take the free last hits that come. I use W there to block both of the auto attacks. So every time, you know, Darius walks up to punish you, just W. If you are good, if you understand the game, you know he's gonna block one auto attack and the W auto attack is it as well. Auto attack the minion here, prepare it. Oof, almost got it. We're just gonna chill in this lane. We have scaling HP. We're completely fine. Just taking it easy. Will two Qs be enough to kill? No. Oh no, I'm, I can't get this one either. Okay, I'm gonna have to prep that. And then I can last hit this with Qs. I really like to be like super uh, health focused in just keeping my health up in these laning phases. Uh, because I'm not running teleport, it's super important for me to stay healthy. Because then I can choose my recall timings uh, by myself, and I don't get forced to recall in a bad position. And this kind of the drawback uh, when running TP is that you have to be really aware of how you use your HP as a resource. Because sometimes it can just end up in you uh, having to take a terrible recall where you lose one and a half waves uh, if you don't. I use my Q to block the... or Q to activate the... Shield. This is a problem here. He might even flash onto me. <laughs> Play it patiently still. I'm gonna go back here. I have my E. Ah, oh, it's fine. If we can clear the wave, that would be really nice. Thank you, Graves. Thank you kindly. At least in Diamond, your jungler understands how important it is to clear the wave. Okay. Uh, you should be able to tell what my uh, island purchase is gonna be here, if you've watched this far. Okay, I want you to maybe even write in the comments what I'm gonna purchase with 1480 gold here. Okay, have you decided? Let's see if you were correct. Do -do 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 -do. 
Tanner, pa 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 pa, and then we're actually gonna wait five gold. I don't know. This one, this one is a little bit controversial. Maybe you thought I was gonna go for boots or longsword. We're gonna prefer the high HP here. It's gonna cost us two seconds in coming back to lane. But now we're gonna have a lot of tankiness, okay? Because Darius level six is coming up, and that is scary. Let me tell you, I've played this matchup a couple of times in my life, and Darius level six never fails to scare me. Darius could be roaming here. We don't know, so I'm just gonna ping that. Just make sure my Jungler is aware of the possibility of Darius coming there. Very nice. Graves finishes the grubs, which now gives us the ability to pressure towers. We have our level 6. We can look for something bot lane. Remember, we are running ultimate hunter, standard chain stuff. So our win condition this game is going to be playing through our team, but also kind of being strong in the sideline. My opponent went for cool, so he's not actually very strong at this timer. But he is level 6 Darius, guys. Do we want to engage onto a level 6 Darius when it's an even fight? No! No, we don't. If he ease us, that's fine. Just gonna E out. He got the extended bleed on us. It's gonna do a little bit of damage, but we have our second wind. We have our Doran shield. We are sustaining. Just make sure you don't key in versus a Darius who has his entire kit up. Just don't do it. It doesn't matter if you have one kill ahead of him, he's still a Darius, okay? Your a ruby crystal is not gonna save you, okay? If you make these mistakes, it's gonna cost you. So we are just gonna be really patient. We're gonna be really patient, guys. It doesn't mean that we are being somehow, you know, scaredy cats or not interacting with the opponent. It just means that we are respecting their champion. Notice he can't really retaliate onto me because I use my W. Remember, he doesn't have flash. Gotta, 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 gotta bait him out. Bait him in a little bit here. I'm gonna press ghost. Boom. That's a kill. That's a kill. Now, I could probably get that kill without wasting both of my summoner spells. But... It's still fine. I'm gonna kite the minions here. I'm not actually... I'm not gonna push. Okay. I'm gonna set up a freeze. <laughs> because I'm Shen. I don't have wave clear yet. I, I can't hard up the wave really fast. I can't get tower damage, okay? I'm instead... I'm just gonna let all the minions die to the enemy minions, okay? This is super nice for me. I'm chilling in this position. Let all the minions die here. Even the next wave as well. Retain as many minions as possible. So that my wave dies as fast as possible. So that Darius gets denied as much experience as possible. Right? Now the minions are gonna start fighting again. Doo -doo -doo. I'm gonna get that first. Oh, missed it. My bad. Darius is here, but he missed an entire wave. And we can just still chill in lane. Oh, I missed another. My bad. Oh, does that minion die as well? Oh, man. And I'm gonna miss this one. Okay, okay, I got it. <laughs> he wants to get the tower plating. I can't stop him. He's gonna get the tower plating. I'm kinda upset about that. Sadness is a word that comes to mind. I don't know how it's being so awkward, man. The minion HPs, they are really awkward. <laughs> For some reason, they are just living with one HP. Uh, this one is gonna live as well. And not that one! Oh, hey, what is going on here? It's not... And... It focuses that one again, I swear. Like, this is just incredibly unlucky. Like, it... it <laughs> the minion HPs are being so weird, man. They're just left outside, like, my double Q range, but still they die to... Hey. Look that one as well, it was at 1 HP after Q. I guess I should have gone back and purchased the Tiamat to get those wave, uh, waves. We're gonna wait uh, on a recall until we can afford the entire Titan Kyra. They're collapsing on the Markai. I'm gonna ult there. We got the, the Galio Shen set up! Uh, I'm a little bit scared of what's going on here. Graves with the flash. Gotta kill. I, I need a little bit of gold here. Oh, I missed it. Sorry, 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 sor
I can sell my Doran shield and get uh, Titanic Hydra. It's a super big spike. But do I still just go topside? And we have a fasting Senna Maokai um, as our strategy in the bot lane. Lose a lot of tower play this topside though. That's the cost of business. That's the cost of business, that's what that is. The Darius is looking for a fight. He has a Tiamat only. Um, I might be able to make it in time to do something. Darius goes for a flash. Let's Darius flash down. Uh oh, uh oh. That is scary. That is, that is, he is big and he is scary and he is Darius. I might be able to catch him here. I'm gonna ghost. I don't know, I don't know if Viego is coming over the wall here, so I'm just gonna ghost. It was not worth it. Viego was bot side actually, but I was scared, okay. I'm not taking any chances. <laughs> Now get all these minions. At that moment the splash. Wait for the cannon minion to die. Now here. Get the attack speed gets me. Ooh, can I get a tower plating? Okay, this is kinda scary guys. Auto attack Titanic Hydra, auto attack, get out. Tower plating achieved. We have 1000 gold, that would be enough for lucidity boots, but steel caps are the boots of choice here. Look at them. Auto attacker, auto attacker, auto attacker, auto attacker. Even Bard is an auto attacker. Steel caps, it is. I actually got two tower platings there. That's crazy that I got two tower platings. That looked like a perfect recall, by the way. Like, the timing was... You know why I got those tower platings? Because Touch of the Void applies a dot effect, right? So, or maybe it was the uh, Hunger of the Void minions. I don't know. I think I, I can still save the tower. I, I'm quite strong right now. I think I can actually fight Darius. He doesn't have flash, his flash is um He's gonna wanna eat me here. Does he kill me? He could have killed me if he had flash. Doesn't he his ulti like kills me there? Okay, that was really my bad. That was a huge mistake. Even if I, even when I don't die there, that was a huge mistake that I did. Although I can kill him now if I see him. But he should have recalled already. Okay, I can clear this wave, but... Yep. I mean, he should have killed me there for sure. He can have Ghost here, so... Back off. Just wanna get the experience. Um, okay, what we learned? Don't E into Darius who has his abilities up. Even when you're 2 0 2 and you think you're strong, just don't do it. We could kill Maokai. Oh, uh, sorry, Twitch by ulting up Maokai. I think I just have to recall. I'm gonna give up the tower, but I don't think I can do anything about that. He's gonna get the tower, it's fine. Oh yeah, look, Stride Breaker is now a Tiamat item. Uh, do we get first tower? Yes, we got first tower, just before Darius. Right. I must say that was calculated, guys. But now we can kill him, if he stays. Man, kurva! Do I have an ability? Q, 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 Q! It blocked 53 damage. <laughs> I had to stand right next to the blade so that my Q finishes casting as soon as possible. Oh. <laughs> I thought I was gonna lose that battle, man. I didn't have enough tenacity to do the E into Q flash. So what the Irish players do is they use E and then Q immediately so that they can get the Q heal guaranteed because you're uh, kind of... Um, Stun from the apprehend or knocked up. I think it has a stun after it as well. If you have a little bit of tenacity, you can spam flash to dodge the Q heal, uh, like the outer blade. Um, but I have zero tenacity, so I couldn't actually do that. So what I'm thinking is Sterax Gauge is a good item this game, right? Does that make sense? Sterax Gauge gives 20% tenacity and it gives a huge shield. So when Darius tries to execute me with his ultimate, my Sterax is gonna trigger. Also, the tenacity is gonna allow me to um, dodge his EQ in the future. Although, if you look at their team comp... Oh, this guy has CC. Viego has a little bit of CC. I'm a ghost here. I'm gonna activate. I missed. I'm in there. I'm a dirty inter. Don't worry about 
Uh, bait the enemy bard in, I guess. But missing the town was really bad. I'll control bard this, see what Viego is doing here. Then activates the Yumus. It is Viego. <laughs> Viego did a, a little disappearance trick. Ah, my god, I'm missing these E's today. Let me chase this. Wait. I'm coming. Kalio, get out of there, buddy. Freedom. Freedom. Turbo speedster, Kalio. <laughs> Uh oh. Nice. Nice. Uh oh. They're gonna go for a little walk here, guys. I won't get stuck. A lot of mistakes were made. What was that? The enemies just collapsed on us again. Oh no. Okay, we're gonna have to focus here, guys. Remember, enemies are master of the air and grandmaster players. I mean, diamond. Uh, this is a diamond game, right? We, we talked about this. It's diamond, but it's actually master. <sighs> Let's think about the item choices here. I think we would be benefit immensely from Iceborne Gauntlet. Allows us to stick on the targets. Um. We're taking mostly physical damage. I mean, Corky is gonna scale to be an active magic damage dealer in the fights, but right now we're taking mostly physical damage. I'm not sure what I should have done at that point. Like, after the fight was lost, I shouldn't have gone for the minion wave, by the way. I should have reacted either by escaping or helping my team. I missed the cannon minions. Boop. No. I don't have enough HP to get that minion with the splash. 25 seconds old. Oh, oh, they are doing it again. I mean, well played by Maka if he leaves, but I don't think he will. He did? Oh. I'm gonna get the top tower here. Maka is still alive. Frozen Heart must be busted. Q here to get seen. Taking the tower. Really wanna be again. Should be scared of enemies here. Gonna go help with the Rift Herald. Although Graves has covered, I think. One thousand gold is my uh, iceborne. The red buff is gonna spawn. We're here to contest. It's good pinging them back. That's really my bad though. Yeah, we got a steal, but that was super bad by me. I didn't hit that. Oh no, man. I'm really inting it. The Viego didn't step like I thought he would. Like he stopped because he, he pressed Q there. So he stopped his movement. So he didn't walk forward so I didn't hit my E. I guess I just wait a little bit so he comes up to the red buff and actually auto attacks it. But that's really bad because then Graves is forced to use his ultimate and, and Markai goes all the way here and... I tried to use my ultimate to save... The Graves but uh, it actually went on Markai. <laughs> I should have ulted using the champion icons here on the right side of like on top of the minimap. We can we can lose this very easily by the way. Like this is like the Darius is scaling now. And Darius was always just gonna be a problem. Um The enemies have so much damage in their team comp. We have like we have a little bit of let's say non-standard team comp, right? We have a couple of tanks and then we have non-standard ADCs. We are highly reliant on physical damage. So the enemies going steel caps and uh, wardens mail makes them immensely tanky. Our Galio has a Maya is with zero stacks, I'm afraid. <laughs> so he's not gonna be a consistent source of magic damage here. Where is his bot side? 
should be able to push. We are gonna have to win this through Makra. We don't actually win the like straight on one v five v five fight. Because if you look at their team comp, like how how do you win five v five versus that? I mean, obviously, like they don't have a clear tank, but they have a Bard and they have a Darius. Darius is gonna be frontlining, and like I don't think we win five v five fights. We we have to win through the map. And through the map, I mean like playing the map correctly. I'm just gonna put a blue bar down here so that I know if they rush Baron. You see Darius still bot side, so I should be able to go because I'm only scared of Darius uh, alone. He's really good if you kill him. Yep. Korg is also a little bit scared because he deals magic damage. I don't want, I, I'm not gonna die for those minions. Just let him cook. He deals too much damage. I'm not a strong one, one versus five champ, one versus one champion, guys. You have to understand that. I think I need to go. Maybe save Kretzer. He cleansed. The guy whose name is Cleansed cleansed. Darius is alive though. Oh! My Galio is goated. Back off, back off, back off. He's scary. Ooh, well played team! Did you see my flash though? I'm, I'm predicting Darius Q flash, so that's not flashing already. So that he doesn't get the heal from me. Don't get knocked up, bro. <laughs> Smart advice to teenagers. <laughs> Anyways, let me just farm a little bit more. I don't know if I should go for magic resist already, or maybe I should go Anatemas and put it on Korki. Anatemas on Korki sounds like the 200 IQ option here, because it gives an effective 70 magic resistance by reducing 30% of the damage that I take. So I'm gonna go for that control bar here as well. Mm. This guy has 27 hubris stacks. Mm. Extract Drake in 3 minutes. I think I will pressure bot side. Or, well, my pressure in this regard is simply negating Darius' split push. Uh, or keeping Darius in the lane. Control bar displaced there. That's a good position, so I'm not gonna replace it yet. I'm just gonna apply Baron buff here, that's what we do. We don't take any chances by dying to Darius. Like, the way we lose this game is by doing stuff like dying to Darius in the side lane. Wait, who's dying? Yeah, that's not worth an ultimate. I should have looked I should have looked there earlier though. I don't have I don't have a ghost here. If Darius comes out of the bush, presses ghost, I'm dead. Right. So I can't be walking up like that. I have to be really okay, we see Darius mid lane, now we can push again. We, remember, we just want to complete our anatemas. Let's gonna clear the next wave here. Uh oh. Viega is coming. I need to get out. Viega stealth right there. I, I lose the cannon minion experience, but sometimes I just have to take the... Yeah, I'm gonna clear the control ward there. How do I know it's a control ward? Because the warding uh, icon uh, is... Mm, Permanent, so so it has the duration shown. So when the red circle is permanent, it has to be a blue trinket or a control ward. There's three people topside, so I can keep pushing. Four people topside. Four people topside. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. Ult. I'm gonna keep pushing here. Five people topside. Let him. Let him cook. Let him cook. Okay. Apply pressure here. They're gonna have to make a bad choice. Either they lose their inhibitor or they win the fight or uh, like, you know. They have to choose between bad options. Please stop this. 
Oh, it's my power. It's my it's my power fantasy to be sent a spirit pusher here. Okay, do I go for more? Okay, take the portal, get out. Whee! Beautiful. We're gonna recall, put Anathema on Korki, and then we're gonna team fight for the Drake. Ideally, I maybe even steal that blue here. I'm gonna put a control ward here because uh, Drake is gonna be our next fight. So I can. Put, uh, this was my previous control ward, right? So I'm gonna give up that control ward in exchange for a control ward that helps. Oh no. I need, I need to recall now. I'm just gonna ult to get into the fight. I was thinking I should go for that blue buff, but that was a mistake in hindsight. Control, uh, sorry, Anathema's chains, and we're gonna move towards Terax next. Double ruby crystal, yes. I should see Korki by the way, so that I can put the Anathema's. I'm gonna put it on Darius. I need to have it active for this fight, so I just need to put it on someone that is visible right now. Me going topside is probably a mistake, but I feel like my my uh, teammates can clear this. Also because uh, and we have I, I took the inhibitor here, so the super minions will be effectively pushing that side lane. I'm gonna ult on uh, Maka ma here. It's gonna look for a big play. He's not gonna get the big play that he's hoping for. Diego was somewhere here. I'm gonna be, keep pushing the lane with the super minions. This is gonna be a little bit crazy here, guys. It's gonna get a little bit crazy. I'm gonna turn into a side lane menace here. Yeah, my teammates is gonna go topside. And I'm gonna stay here. Darius is the guy who can kill me really fast. I would like to put my anathemas now on Korki. Uh, when it comes up cooldown. I'm gonna soak up some pressure. I have double mobility summoner spells, guys. So... Uh, we really need to push now. We need, we need to push. Look, they are going for me. We see Darius, uh, sorry, uh, Viego and uh, Bart here. I'm gonna back off. What was that, Malignance? Why does Malignance trigger there? They want to go for me here, by the way. I still have flash. I wasted that time. What did my team do with that time? Apparently nothing. I'd like to put Anathema on Korki? Ah, damn, I didn't get it in time. Wait, I'm gonna stay both fight. Oh, how's Rico? Where Rico? Um, Sterax. Elixir of Iron here for the Baron fight. I'm not actually gonna reuse my anathemas here because uh, I have to have the maximum efficiency to get full value out of it. So we're gonna keep it on Darius, uh, and then when Darius dies, we are gonna recast it. Hopefully Darius dies. <laughs> okay, Twitch came out of stuff there. We are quite large, quite huge with 5k HP. Trying to bait out the Corky package. Diego is bot side. Hey, 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 this is an engage. Okay, we got one. Whee! Everybody take it. <laughs> Look, I downed him. Uh, maybe end. Do we end? Do we end? 40, 30. We could go Baron or we could try to end. I think ending is worth <laughs> I mean, obviously it's worth it if it works out, but uh, the expected value is high. Remember that reduced tenacity on Darius from my Anathemus is gonna be really effective in shutting him down in the fights. Okay, a little one shot tech. Have to get out of tower range. I got you, my guy. Don't worry about that. Look at the look at the reduced tenacity, bro. Can't move. I stopped a lot of damage on Oh no, back off, back off. Try to end here. We're gonna hit diamond, guys! Imagine this is you in your diamond promo game, and you're gonna win! Let's go! Oh, you're diamond, man! You're a diamond send, man! Mm, P. Now, if you reach diamond because of this video, I'm gonna tell, okay? You have to subscribe now. You're obligated to subscribe. And in fact, I know 
I know you're gonna look. Oh wait, wait, wait! Look, 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 look here! Look, client, look, client. I think, I mean, okay, I think it's gonna be master the promotion. I mean, imagine this is diamond, right? This is your diamond icon right here. This boom, diamond yellow. Bam! That's crazy. So I know for a fact that you're gonna reach diamond after watching this video. So you are obligated to subscribe right now. Just do it. Just do it. But thank you very much for watching. How to actually count to diamond, which and season fourteen edition. I hope you have a very wonderful day and a wonderful week. See you in the next one, guys. Bye-bye.